going on everybody welcome to today's installment of Mike's vehicle vlogs I want to thank you so much for joining me today um, my mom's escape is back so the 2014 Ford Escape SE with the 1.6 liter it is here because I got a couple of things that I got to do to it today so we're going to do an oil change we're going to do both cabin and uh, engine air filters also she wants me to apply this stuff to the windshield, so I'm going to do some windshield cleaning. And the rear camera, all of a sudden, is intermittently not working. So I have a feeling that that one is going to be an open circuit where the uh, tailgate or the liftgate hinges is or are. So I'm going to scan it real quick for codes. We're going to see if there's anything in regards to the camera being open circuited or something. And then that way, uh, it'll kind of give me an idea uh, if that's, you know, what we're going to end up chasing down the road. I'm not doing any really any real fix on that today. But um, the main focus of the video, you know, we've already done a little change video on this car. But my main focus today was to do uh, how to change, you know, your cabin air filter and the engine air filter on these because the cabin filter as I mentioned if you saw the video where we did the Fiesta cabin filter it's kind of similar to that it's kind of buried under the dash near the center uh, by the floorboards so you're gonna have to there's kind of a, a process to getting it out and uh, the engine air filter depending on you know which one you have like if you have the one six you've got the canister looking air filter and it's Sometimes can be a challenge. I want to show you a trick to getting those in. Yeah, first off, uh, since, you know, I, I kind of forgot that she had mentioned the thing about the camera. Until I went to go use it and the camera was on for like three seconds and then it went to a gray screen. But I have a feeling, like I said, the uh, wire, the, the the communication wire, or the, um, it's you know, like a, a TV coaxial type cable, I think. They have the ability to uh, eventually get weak where the the lift gate opens and closes near the hinges so the wire may actually just be coming apart on the inside it might need a new harness um, that's my guess anyway um, there might be a code it's done it enough times it may actually have a code for it maybe let's uh, let's find out all right so now we got the all tell all loaded up we're just gonna do an all system scan it's usually the easiest way to do it I don't know if I'm a fan of the battery that we put in this car. Um, the battery is only putting out 12 volts at this time. Um, the battery was replaced last year and, um, you know, I just had the car running not that long ago. So it's kind of weird that the battery sits so low. So there may be a code for this thing. There may not be a code for this thing. And uh, no, there may not be any code for that thing. So it looks like there are no codes at all in any of our modules. If we go into reverse, we have a camera. Camera seems to be working pretty well right now. But the car is not on, there's no vibrations, there's you know nothing, I think, really shaking anything, if you know what I mean. Oh, it was just going blank, I think, as I, yeah, there, it, yeah, see, so, now it's on, it's, it got kind of glitchy. So what I was thinking about doing is I brought the tripod out here, and uh, if we can get it to stay on, oh, nope, there it goes, see. But I wonder if I go back there and I, I start, you know, maybe trying to move or wiggle the, the, the lift gate a little bit, I bet it's gonna start acting kinda crazy. Yeah, see, it's just... So I don't think it's the camera itself. I mean, it very well could be, that's a good possibility. But I've seen that a lot of these end up being the harness itself. And I don't remember, I don't remember where the harness attaches to. In the back, it's somewhere in the ceiling under the headliner. 
I don't remember how far back it goes, but either there's a bend in it or there could be uh, water or corrosion that has kind of corrupted it a little bit. But um, I figure, you know, it'd be kind of interesting to maybe give that a shot. All right, so we got the camera on the tripod. Um, I'm gonna th parking brakes on, obviously, so the car's not gonna roll into me. So let's throw it in reverse. I'm not going to spend all video on this, I promise. <laughs> but um, I was just curious. So, yeah, we opened it, we closed it. Let's try it again. Back in park. One of the number one rules is usually when it comes to wiring and you have an issue, you don't want to start wiggling things because <laughs> you might fix it. But you know, I tried looking for codes, there's no codes for it. Um, I'm gonna go back there one more time. Hmm. All right, so there's a proper testing procedure. We're obviously not doing that today. Um, I just wanted to kind of see if it was gonna act up when we flex the wiring. Um, it may be something else. I know the wiring thing, like I said, is kind of a common thing. But um, yeah, it's weird. Um, didn't really act up as much as I thought it was going to when I did that. But like I said, there's a proper testing procedure. I don't know it offhand. I'd have to try to look it up and service data uh, so maybe we'll save that for another day if it gets bad uh, real bad but it for the most part appears to be working pretty decent <laughs> right now so uh, I don't know so let's just jump ahead to doing uh, all the other stuff that I had you know plan on doing for this video but we're gonna find a lot of this stuff in that cabin filter That's a dead beetle, that's gross. All right, so I'm gonna get to doing the oil change. Get that, that out of the way, and then we'll do all the other stuff here uh, on top. Huh? 
what the heck so this transmission was replaced or I'm sorry I should say half of it was replaced um, back in oh man I don't remember when it was now 2019 or 2020 it was one of the two no my mom got the car in 2019 uh, it must have been 2020 uh, needed a needed a transmission rebuild So you can see this case here. This is all new The rest of it's not new so I don't know Something grenaded in the last transmission And now it looks like this transmission has a little leak I shouldn't have worn this shirt. I like this shirt too much to be on the ground Is it the case? This would be, or the pan, this would be the pan, I guess. That's very peculiar, peculiar, I could say that word, peculiar, I don't know. I brought my flashlight. Yeah, I don't have any good angles really. The whole side, It could be just running from whatever it is up there. We're dry on this side. There's nothing there. I think we're dry over here. Something on this side. It's been driving okay, um, from my knowledge, so I don't think it's... Uh, it either hasn't been leaking that long or it's not leaking enough to cause any issues or maybe it's not leaking at all now <laughs> maybe this is old I don't know this is very weird um, and also upsetting so it's not really wet on this side of the case here here and there from that sensor. I don't know. I wish I could see the top. But I can't. I don't think we can see it from the top of the, uh, from the top either because the, I think the air cleaner housing is actually right above us. I don't know. That's definitely something to keep an eye on now. Yeah, so when it was, when it's being driven, you could see it just kind of spreads. Man. My poor mom. Wow, that I apparently put on a little too tight last time I did this. Now the oil in this car really isn't due yet. It's got about 2,000 miles left on it. But it has been in here for about a year at this time. So, we'll just go ahead and change it based off the time basis. I've said it a million times, my mom doesn't drive as much as she used to, so we may as well just get it over with. Looks pretty good, looks pretty good, looks normal. These one sixes have the pain in the butt oil filter because all of the cooler lines are in the way of it. So I'm gonna have to switch sides when I go to change it. Oh boy. Well, this isn't that bad on the engines that have the uh, non turbocharged one sixes like my Fiesta because these aren't in your way. You have the cooler line still, but you can easily work around those on the Fiesta. This is a whole different ball game apparently. Always is. Again, I'm being a dummy today and I'm wearing a nice shirt while I'm out here. So, I prefer not to really 
get splashed on. Because <laughs> I'm an idiot. It's also very toasty. Very toasty. Here it comes. Oh no. Oh, oh I lost it. Oh no. I lost it. Oh crap. Boo. Epic fail. Now right, we got our new filter on there nice and tight. I got a little bit of brake clean left. Try to spray out what I spilled into the fan. Yeah, gotta hate it when that happens. I would say love it and I gotta love it when that happens, but I don't. <laughs> I hate it, so. Let's get all this stuff. Oh well. Alright, the bottom's all put together. It is time to fill it up with the appropriate 520 synthetic blend that it requires and this uh, I did not do the bulk oil today because when I went to go buy it I forgot to get my jug so I had to buy it in quartz which is fine I also when I came home from work yesterday I realized I grabbed other things to do like the filters and stuff I did not grab my spill proof funnel so I gotta make this little guy here work without spilling it I guess we will see what happens yeah. That's what's gonna happen. Uh, four and a half, four point three quarts. All right, so we're gonna start with that. Before we start it up and get it off the ramps, let's do this engine air filter real quick. So like I said, if you have the 1.6 or the 1.5, or I do believe the 2.0 EcoBoost engines, you're gonna have a filter housing that looks like this. If you have the naturally aspirated 2.5 liter engine for this generation escape, which again, this is a 14, so anything from 20, 13 to 2019 this is the escape you're looking at the two fives have a different air filter housing they might have i think the easier housing because it's a flat filter this one is not flat it is a round canister and some people have a hard time dealing with either this cover or the filter itself trying to get it housed and i'm going to show you the trick that i used to use every day when i worked at the ford dealership on how to get this not only to sit properly but to how to get the filter to sit properly as well you're gonna need uh, an 8 millimeter I always just use my extension with an 8 on it because these two things here they're easy to get to the other two that one's there and the other one's kind of deep a little bit so also these screws are notorious for breaking over time Let's see that one's right there and we got the one here. So that's it. So once you loosen those up, you should be able to kind of pull these out. They don't come out of the, um, oops, that one's the other. Yeah, they don't come out of the actual cover, but you know what I mean. Just lift them up. And there we go. So this filter, wow, really isn't all that bad. So this was, last time this was changed was like, you know, in 2019, when my mom bought the car, it's got a little bit of dirt getting in there. The bottom side is probably going to look worse. So, lift it up from this side. Pull it out. Yeah, no, not really. It's not in the worst of shape. But, like I said, it's sometimes better to just replace them and get them over with. 
this thing has been in there like I said for three years almost four we're just gonna replace it anyway and it's just gonna go off on its merry way goodbye if you're buying the actual motorcraft cart like I do FA 1908 is your part number It comes in a nice plastic bag that's way too big for the filter itself. And there's the new one. So yeah, it definitely looks brighter than the other one. Now if you look at these, if I lay them side by side like that, you're going to see that our new one looks like it's a little larger. Yeah. Uh, because when they go in they have to be compressed so you can see like the wavy lines in this one and This one's perfectly straight So sometimes people have a hard time getting these in because of the fact that they're not compressed enough um, So if you try to put it in and sometimes I've been able to get them to work without doing this trick But doing the tricks a little easier first of all you have to understand how these go in so if you look at this side here, there's a notch right there at the very bottom. And that notch has to go into this open groove here. And then you have to keep in mind that the actual edge of this filter has to line up in this. See that lip? It's got to go in there like that. So the best way to try to get this is to, to work in there first try is you have to actually compress the filter and what better way to do it is to actually take it on the ground put the open side in on the ground and then what you're going to do is you're going to push it push down on it and you're going to twist it at the same time don't have to do it a whole lot but that's it so you just kind of gave this filter by doing this pushing and twisting you gave it a little bit of flex it's going to be easier to compress when you get it into the housing up top. Yeah, just like that. So see, that really isn't that difficult if you compress the filter first. So you got that notch in that bottom groove, and you've got this entire lip here inside the bottom half of the filter housing. And that's also going to play a huge part and getting that cover to sit properly. So when you put the cover on, make sure you have all your tabs lined up. Oh, you're gonna see this a lot too, see this guy? If it's over tightened over time, the plastic actually cracks. They're probably all like that. Uh, I don't think that one down there is. Can't see that one. This one looks like it's on its way. So obviously when you put it back on, you don't wanna over tighten it. So just line up your just like that that's it there really is no uh, no challenges if the filter is compressed first try to start these in by hand if you can that back one is always kind of a you know I don't think you can up oh, yeah a little bit yeah and like I said if you're gonna tighten it up with one of these don't go all crazy on it just little good there that's good there that's good there one more that's good that's it that's all it takes I know a lot of people complain about these new hires who would come in who've never done one of these before would get so upset and curse and all kinds of stuff that you just got to know the trick to do it that's all so uh, let's start it up get it off the ramps and then we will do the oh so challenging <laughs> uh, cabin filter replacement which is gonna probably look a million times worse than what that guy did
Sounds good. Got no oil light. Pressure's up. Just a little bit of leftover oil residue, it looks like. I didn't get to spray the top half of that. Uh, coolant's looking a little low. So I think I'm going to have to top that off. I think I still have the red stuff, or the orange stuff downstairs. Go ahead and shut it off. Check the oil level. I honestly was not planning on filming the entire oil change process because I've done that in the past with this car so we really didn't have to see that but you know why not doing the filters might be short so on these dipsticks I don't know if I've ever mentioned it there's two little cutouts it's hard to tell on the camera but there's two cutouts here min and max obviously so you need it to be behind there or uh, in between I should say If you look here, most of these 1.6s will actually put a sticker on there that say what the oil capacity is. Do not add oil further than that. And as, as you see here, you want to try to get it between the A and B. Makes sense, right? Honestly, I'm not 100% sure why they're so adamant on this engine being, you know, at that particular level because you don't see that on any other. I've, I've never seen it on any other Ford engine. This one might just be at the max mark, so I think we're good. And uh, yes, indeed, it is at the max mark exactly. So we're not gonna go any further than that. It is good where it's at. Um, obviously when you're pouring it out of the, the quartz themselves, you have to kind of use your best judgment. We still have quite a bit in that second one, so I knew we didn't pour all that much into it. And I don't like these dipsticks. I never did, to be honest with you, because they go through the valve cover, and sometimes you have oil from the actual head, like where the valves and stuff are, all that oil runs down in there. So, it's not the best setup, but uh, yeah, it is, it is at the full mark exactly, so we're good, we're done. Alright, so we're done under here. Um, all that's good. I took my pad in the house, I don't know why, because we're going to be back on the ground again to do the cabin filter. So, I'm going to go get that, and let's get started. Alright folks, we are here on the passenger side of the dashboard. We are on the floor. Here's our glove box, the bottom of our glove box door. Center stack right over here. So the filter for this car, for the cabin, is right up here. Yes, I know. Um, I'm willing to bet that this filter has not been changed, even though it should have been when the car was bought in uh, 2019. Nobody likes to come up here to do this filter. So, I'm willing to bet that it is has probably not been changed. So I'll try to show you guys what I can. Uh, I might be able to move you guys over here. Let's see, try to get the camera to sit up. Yeah, it's gonna lean. I might lean on the screen a little bit. Oh, that might work. Okay, if, I, if I don't move you guys, you guys have a direct shot. Or if I don't have to move you, you know. So first things first. You're gonna to need to take this hush panel off. It's got these little, I don't know, plastic nuts here. Not even really nuts. You squeeze the, the sides of them and they pull off. And then to put them back on, when you're done, you just push them in. And that's it. So there's one there that you squeeze and you pull off. There's another one here that you squeeze and you pull off. Oh, this brings back some fond memories. I, used to, <laughs> I haven't done this in a while. Pull this panel down. Kind of tucks under here this way or it'll get stuck around this yellow thing you just pulled the tab off there and you take this and you put it somewhere 
like outside. Now I can put you guys here. So, how did, oh, how did I do that? It was like that. All right, oops. So the real trick to this, there's one Torx bit down here. I forget what the exact size is, so I'm gonna have to have put some Torx bits in there. I used to have a uh, my little ratcheting screwdriver. I used to leave the bit in it all the time. I actually brought it home from work specifically for this because this this helps. Is it this size here? It is not. That's too big. All right. So let me get another bit. I have obviously sensed used the screwdriver for other purposes. I'm tearing my gloves. I really don't need gloves for this part. I don't know why I do. I'm not wearing them. There we go. So uh, what bit is this? You're going to need a T20. Oh, I should have known that. So there's a bit here. Get yourself a ratcheting screwdriver. Look at that. That makes it so much easier than trying to turn a screwdriver. The carpet, you can see the screwdriver is pushing down on the carpet because the carpet wants to come up. So once you get the screw so far out, don't lose it, but you can grab the screw. And then there's a tab up here. There's a tab here. You obviously have to squeeze them both at the same time. And the door will start to come off. And there's the filter. I can already see some nasty stuff behind there. Uh, so, now getting it out is going to be another challenge. You have to pull the filter out and you're going to have to, it's going to be a little bit of a challenge. Oh, there's all kinds of stuff back here. I knew it. I knew it. There we go. Oop. All right. Ah. All right, there's, there's the cabin filter. Wow, really? It's bad. It is real bad, but I thought it was going to be worse. I thought there was going to be more debris in it because of my mom parking under trees in the house. Not in the house, but next to the house. But we got some cloggage, all that stuff. Yeah, so it's it's time. It may have been changed. Maybe they actually did change it when we bought it that time. Uh, there's, I can see a leaf in there. So we need to uh, make sure there's nothing that's going to get caught in the blower motor because you don't want to even try to do a blower motor job on this car unless you absolutely have to. There we go. Get that out of there. Try to get your hand back there as far as you can. Um, I believe the AC evaporator core is right where my hand is in here. Anyway, the blower motor, you got to tear the whole dashboard out of this car to do a blower motor job on it. And I know I don't want to do that. I probably can't do that here at the house. <sighs> yep. All right. So now you take a new filter. If you're doing motorcraft parts like I do. FP70. Sorry. Didn't realize the screen. <laughs> Camera was that far down. So... Oh, much, much better. Ooh. Comparison there. Heck yeah. Alright. Well, we need to take a picture of this and show it to my mom. Because... I told her it's probably going to look bad. Alright. We'll send that to her when I'm done. Alright. Uh, air direction, just like this. So the airflow is going toward the center console in like this. It's a funky blower motor setup or climate box. 
All right, so getting it in, the goal to get it in is you have to kind of bend this in like a, like a C almost. So what I used to try to do, and you guys are probably gonna be in my way a little bit, but I'll try to do what I can. So I start to bend it, get both sides under the dashboard, and then I would try to get one side in at the bottom, and then I would try to work the top in. Oh, it's been so long since I've done this. And you don't really have to worry about really destroying these things because they're a lot tougher than you would think. There we go. So I got the bottom in, get the top in. There we go. And then once those are in, you just kind of just kind of crinkle it in somewhat. Eventually it starts moving like that. And I usually push them all the way in to make sure they're in and then pull it out a little bit, slightly, like that. And then once, you know, once the air and stuff's going, it's gonna start to, uh, you know, it'll start to kind of form itself, form itself out. Now the door, getting the door on, <laughs> Uh, you're gonna see on the top of the door here there's a little cutout that means there's a little peg up there at the very top so that peg has to be lined up and then you could push the tab push the door into the tabs try to work through the carpet that's coming up you know that's it it's in see Then take that one little screw you got. Try to work past the carpet hump. Take your ratcheting screwdriver. Put it to forward speed. Get wedged in there. Start twisting it in. It's going into plastic, so as always, when you get to the stopping point, just lightly snug it up. Boom! You just replaced your cabin filter in your second generation Escape. So now we're going to put this hush panel back on. There are also two feet on it, basically. There and there. And those kind of line up in, in there somewhere. They just, there's really no spot for them. It's very flimsy. So get one of your yellow pegs through there. Get the other yellow peg through the other side. Sometimes if you get those in first, you can work on it. It's obviously easier when you have two hands. So then kind of push it up in there. These two plastic things here. Push it up. That's it. All done. And then uh you know, if you leave any mess, what I used to do is, you know, if a lot of this stuff would come out. Um, when I was messing with the blower motor filter, I would take my, I had a vacuum, little tiny shop vac that I use, and I would kind of clean up the mess that I made. So, yeah, it's not that bad. You just have to be patient with it, and you, again, kind of have to know the tricks and tips and tricks to getting it in and out successfully.
All right, so she also wanted me to put this rain -X stuff on here. I've never used this stuff. Usually the spray wax that I use will kind of take care of everything as far as, you know, uh, repelling the water. So, yeah, we cleaned our windshield. I think I just spray this. I need another cloth. I could probably use the same one I got here. Uh, oh, so you gotta let it sit? Okay. Alright, so we got the uh, Rain-X stuff on there. That stuff's kind of a pain to... That stuff's kind of a pain to deal with. Uh, <laughs> but it's on there. That's on there. We need to reset the oil life. You can't do that on this car any other way. I probably could have done it with the Altel, but... No, we'll do it the hard way. <laughs> um... Gas and brake to the floor in the uh, on position. Hold your feet to the floor. It's gonna say oil reset in progress. It feels like an eternity. Oil reset complete. Take your feet off. And you're good to go. Uh, I'm gonna reset the trip on this one because I don't have stickers. Um, we'll do trip two, how about that? So about 79,000 miles. That's actually pretty easy to remember. Put that back there. All right, let's take the car back. Curious about the camera, because the camera is working fine. Oh, very bizarre. Yeah. yeah, I don't know. One cool thing about this wooded area is uh, you can kind of hear the turbo <laughs> if you give it a little bit of acceleration. Oh, did you hear that? <laughs> wow, I did not realize uh, that you can actually hear the turbo on this engine that uh, that precisely. <laughs> That's so cool. I never I never noticed that before. Oh wait, we we have a uh, we do this concrete bridge here. Let's see if I can get it to do it real quick. <laughs> I love it, that's so cool. The turbo is the one other thing on this car that was replaced, and uh, it was replaced um, in 2021. Uh, the turbo started leaking oil outside of it, and uh, obviously that's not good. So, uh, that seems to be working okay. I didn't notice any weird oil leaks or anything like I did the first time. Um, <clears throat> was it the first time or second time I did it? Well, I, I forget. It might have been the first time but we noticed oil leaking near the firewall that's where the tur uh, turbo is and um, yeah it turns out the turbo um, there's no way to fix it turbo has got to be replaced that and all of the lines cooler lines and all that stuff those were also replaced um, when the turbo was done I mean other than that they're really the transmission and the turbo those were the only two major things done with this car yet and uh, like I said, it's been uh, over, a little over three years now of ownership. So it's not holding up to the standards I was hoping it was going to hold up to when my mom bought it. But the Kia Sportage that she had was probably going to end up being a, more of a handful than this car. I'm so glad we got rid of that turd. All right, so I got it back to mom's. I backed in the driveway, and you know what? The camera worked the entire time, so uh, I don't know. I think that's probably gonna get worse. Um, that's gonna be my guess, is that it's, it's just, it's gonna get worse, and then maybe it'll be easier for us to track down, but it, it was working now. So, I, uh, I, <laughs> I don't know. 
There's the sob. Let's go. When there's fudge in the house, you take some fudge. Very well, little escape. Until next service. All right, so that's the end of that. And now before I head home, my dad got a hold of me while I was still working on my mom's car and he wants to know if I can stop by with my Altel and try to see if there are any codes on the new car that he just got. Oh yeah. Um, my dad uh, replaced the Cobalt. So I'm not gonna tell you guys what he got. He's had it for a couple weeks now actually. Um, but there is a concern that he has and he wants me to see if there's anything uh, stored in the uh, computers about it, so I'm gonna check it out. I'm not gonna show you guys what the car is right now. Uh, I know there's stuff that he wants me to do to the car, so we will have a video on it sometime in the future. Don't know exactly when, but we'll have a video on it, so we'll save that as a, as a surprise. But that's where I'm heading now, so uh, what I need you guys to do is to head on down to that uh, thumbs up button also comment and subscribe. I will see you guys next time and I want to thank you for joining me today. Uh, take care.